Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. I've got John here to go over everything Celtic, any news, gossip, any rumours. We're going to go through the rivals corner. We're going to go through the international stuff. We're going to go through everything. Not much been happening, but we'll go through whatever has been happening. Let's say hello to John. How are you, John? I'm good. How's you? I'm okay, John. I was uh, I was away up north over the weekend doing a bit of decorating, etc. So I've come back feeling a wee bit rough. Um, but we'll plough through it, we'll plough through it. Um, what have you been up to since the Glasgow Derby last week? Just watching the highlights, usual stuff, Celtic videos. Uh, a lot of good Celtic videos out there. I particularly like the one I sent you the day. I can't mind the boy's name that uploaded it. The one where uh, Alan Partridge doing the commentary for the Celtic goals. Brilliant. Right, right. I've not seen that yet, John. I'll get, I'll get to that. Actually, I've not seen that. I will get to it. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, the the part I'm flying about after the, the Glasgow Derby last Sunday's been brilliant, John. Isn't it? It's been non-stop fun, laughter, etc. It's been good. I've enjoyed it. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with that, John. I will get to that. Um, all right, let's move on then. Uh, obviously, Scotland's or an international duty, isn't they? So uh, there's no much Celtic been happening. But let's go through some of the stuff that has been happening. Obviously. The news earlier was that Alistair Johnson's picked up an injury, John. So right away, we've got bad news there, Alistair Johnson. But the Canada managers came out and said it's just precaution, a slight hamstring tweak there, John, for, for Alistair. Nothing too serious. Should be okay for the Hearts game. Well, we'll soon find out. Look, he's one of our best players, Alistair Johnson. And the cover at the back for him, Anthony Ralston's not the best. And, look, Anthony's a good player, but he ain't no Alistair Johnson. I'm not, anybody that thinks he is is kidding themselves. He's half decent cover for in the league, but if we lose Alistair for Champions League games, that's a big, big concern for me. And uh, I can only hope Alistair's okay because he would be a huge loss if we were to lose him, Xander. That's, that is concerning. Yeah, yeah, John, the only good news out of that is that he may not play the second game for USA. Obviously, that was a, uh, for Canada, sorry. That was a 2 1 1 against USA. Uh, so he'll hopefully be missing the second game and he's on his way home and he should be okay for the weekend. That's what I'm hoping for anyway, John. The manager has already said that it's uh, just a, ham- a slight hamstring tweak and they take him off just a preca- just as a precaution. So, uh, fingers crossed, he's okay for the game at the weekend. Uh, moving on, Maeda scored, didn't he, for Japan in a 7-0 route of China. So Maeda keeping up the good form, the good early start to the season with a goal against China. Aye, that's good. Keep up the good work, Dyson. The biggest concern is getting these players back without injury. That's always the concern. And we've spoken about this many times. As long as our players come back without incident, I'm happy. But uh, what you're always going to expect, at least one to come back with an injury. And uh, I'm just hoping and praying that that is just something he's felt in his hamstring, but he's OK. Alistair Johnson. And well done, Dyson Maida, by the way. That is a scalping, isn't it? 7-0. There is a bit of scalping, John, because China are only the worst team in the world, let's be honest. They're not the best either, to be fair, but um, yeah, a bit of scalping there. We'll get to the Scotland stuff later on, John, we'll get to that, I promise. OK, let's have a look at some of the, the, the Celtic players that are away in international duty. This is not including the NAB team players or anything, John, this is just your your main players. Scales is away, um, he's away with Ireland, Alistair's away with Canada. Um, Ingles, John, he's away, isn't he? He's away in international duty with Belgium. Hitati and Maida are both away with Japan. Ralston's away with Scotland. Why is Taylor not being picked for Scotland, John? Do you know anything about that? Or is he there? Maybe, I, maybe I've just missed it out. I'm not sure, but I didn't see Taylor's name in amongst the Scotland squad. I watched the Scotland game the other night there. Do you know what? I can't even remember if Greg was playing. I don't think he was. I know Anthony was playing. No, Greg Taylor definitely wasn't there, but uh, Anthony Ralston was playing and gave away yeah. a penalty as well, of course, Anthony. But uh, no, I don't know why Greg's not in the Scotland uh, squad, but he might be in the squad, he's just not being picked. But, yeah. you know, Scotland's problem is their defence. I've got a really bad defence. Uh, Grant Hanley gave away a penalty as well. Uh, I don't rate that guy that plays in defence for Scotland. Kenny McLean, I think that guy's an absolute dud. Um so I find it hard to understand why uh, Greg Taylor has been picked. I really, that is bamboozling the top quality left back. Uh, Kenny McLean is torture, John. I don't know how he gets a game for Scotland. But anyway, that's besides the point. I just don't understand why. Because I looked at the t- the players that were away, John, and Greg definitely isn't there. So maybe he picked up a wee knock. I don't know. Um, because, you know, without 
uh, what's his name, Robertson and Tierney missing for the Scotland squad. You would have thought Greg would have been an automatic pick. So he must have picked up a slight knock after the Rangers game. Going, that's the only thing I can think of. Anybody knows otherwise, let us know in the comments. Uh, and uh, Sina Salo, he's away with Finland. They're uh, the number two goalkeeper. Schmeichel away with Denmark. Palmer away with Honduras. Trusty away with USA. And of course, Bernardo, who will be playing against Scotland with Portugal, John. So uh, that's a fair old chunk of the team away. That's, that's practically the full team away there, isn't it? Uh, well, that's it. It's the pros and cons of having a, an international level squad, isn't it? They have to go to these international games and risk coming back injured. So that's the thing. But Greg Taylor, look, he's not going to push Andy, Andy Robertson out of the team in Scotland, by the way. Andy Robertson's an outstanding left back. Absolutely out of this world. Um, definitely the best left back. Best Scottish left back there is. I'd love to see him at Celtic. What a player he is. But uh, he's not going to. Greg's not going to push him with the Scotland team. Maybe that's why he's no played. But I suppose Greg could maybe play it right back, you know. But Anthony Ralston was played there. He's a natural right back, and they gave away a penalty. Yeah, but apart from that, I think Anthony had a decent game. For what I've seen, anyway. Yeah, we were touching on it. Maybe we'll touch on it the now, John, because I thought the BBC's reaction to Anthony Ralston giving away that penalty was absolutely disgusting yet again. As soon as a Celtic player makes a mistake on that BBC, John, they're down their throats. It's unbelievable. Um, uh, Ralston is, is a very, very good right-back, John, and, and he played well against Poland, I might add. So um, the BBC need to stop this picking on Celtic players whenever they make a mistake. And that's maybe partly why Callum packed it in, John, because of the negative feedback he got after the Euros. So, you know... The BBC need to pack that in. Uh, stop picking on players, especially Celtic players, when they when they make a mistake for Scotland. Aye, well, like Callum McGregor, I remember watching the game when the Euros were on. I can't remember who it was. Was it a Germany game? Scotland were playing in the Euros or something. And I watched all the games on the Irish channels at RT, RT T or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, but I watched I watched it on there, and even they were giving Callum McGregor a hard time. Um, so I Celtic players they seem to get picked on maybe they've got higher uh, expectancy levels from Celtic players maybe that's what it is because Celtic are champions they've got great players maybe they've just got high expe expectations for Celtic players when they play for Scotland I don't know Xander but uh, the BBC are well, they're very poor anyway it's, just a, it's a bad channel the only one I like for BBC is uh, Liam McLeod the rest Nah, forget it. I don't listen to BBC, BBC now anyway. Yeah, I was listening to a bit of the day in the radio, John. It was the usual candidates. You know, Thompson, the ex-Rangers player. McCann, ex-Rangers player. Dodds, ex-Rangers player. I mean, they're, they're getting all the top jobs, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, stop picking on the Celtic players. That's all I say, say about that. They're there. They're trying to do a professional job. Moving on, the other Celtic players, John, away on international duty. Lewis Palmer, John, 4 nothing win for Honduras. Didn't find the net again. Uh, I think Lewis needs to start finding his shooting boots again because he was scoring for fun at the start of last season, so he needs to start finding his shoot shooting boots pretty quickly if he wants back into the Celtic first 11. Aye. Well, he's not a striker, really, is he? He's a, a winger, but for a winger, his return of goals is very poor. I mean, like you say, when he first started with Celtic, he was on fire. But uh, he really needs to uh, get his shooting boots on because, uh, I don't know, just after that penalty that he missed for Honduras, he's, I don't, has he scored a goal since? I don't think he's even scored a goal since for Celtic. I don't think so, John. I don't think he has. And that's, uh, his I form think he's scored in a friendly. Yeah, he's scored in a friendly. But I think his form's actually pretty seriously dipped. He's got to get his head together, Palmer. And obviously, he's not getting much of a chance at Celtic just now as well, John. So that's maybe an issue for him. Um, obviously, Maida's flying. He's not going to be forcing Maida out of the team anytime soon. And any time he comes on as a sub as well, John, it's like 10 minutes to go or whatever, isn't it? So, yeah, just um, hopefully the boy gets his act together because he's a decent player, John. He really is a good player. And we want to see him succeed at Celtic. We want to see every player succeed at Celtic. Sorry, I was having a, a drink there. <laughs> But, uh, I was expecting that rant to go on a wee bit longer. 
Uh, just a quick rant tonight, folks. It's only a wee half hour video, so quick rants, I'm afraid. Aye, quick rants, aye. Uh, no, look, but, but I can't even remember what we're talking about now. But Lewis Palmer, of course, aye. Uh, I'm sure he'll come good. Brendan's good at getting the best out of players that are our form. Brendan will get the best out of him. I think we'll see an improved Lewis Palmer this season. We know he's got loads of potential, tons of potential. It's just a case of, uh, you know, letting it show in the park, which he's failed today for the last probably seven, eight months. So uh, he's got to return to that form again and uh, hopefully even, you know, force his way into the first team, Zander, because he's got the potential. He has. Yeah, I like him. I do. Um, all right, moving on. Engels got a 15 minute debut for Belgium during a bye. At all accounts, I never saw the game, but by all accounts, he played a blinder for 15, 20 minutes, John. So that's good news for us to see Engels even coming on as a substitute for Belgium because they're full of top quality players, aren't they? Um, so well done, Engels, John, and hopefully he can carry that outstanding form for Belgium into Celtic. Start my hearts on uh, Saturday. Aye, well, let's hope so. I've never seen the Belgium game, but that Belgium team, they're very poor to watch. I was watching them in the Euros. Very uh, defensive-minded. Don't know if they've changed a few players. Obviously, if Engels is getting a game, they've had a look at the squad, want to change a few things up. So, uh, aye, look, getting a game for Belgium's a, a big achievement because, like you say, they're full of world-class talent. Um, I can't wait to see Engels, you know. Can't wait to see him starting on a game to see what he's capable capable of because we haven't seen anything yet. He's only played about half an hour and they've really got a chance to shine. So I'm looking forward to him starting again to see what he's like. Yeah, it's high praise indeed, John. And De Bruyne's coming out and getting him high, high marks. So that's high praise indeed, isn't it? So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm like you, John. Looking forward to him starting a few games and getting his uh, getting himself settled into Celtic because I think he's going to be a superstar for us this season. Uh, all right, John, let's, let's swiftly move on. We're rattling through this. This is good. This is good. Uh, Celtic Legends played against Manchester United over the weekend, didn't they? So that finished one each. Uh, Vigar Hooper scoring for Celtic. Wayne Rooney scoring for Manchester United. Finished 5 4 to Celtic on the penalties. So Celtic beat Manchester United down at Old Trafford. Didn't see it either, John, because I was too busy. Um, decorating, so I didn't see any of this, but by all accounts, it was a good wee game, good atmosphere, good crowd. Wayne Rooney praising Celtic, all said they wanted to play for Celtic, etc. etc. Uh, I did know that Rooney was a Celtic supporter, I did know that obviously. Um, his family are Celtic supporters as well. But he gave a wee interview, John, uh, talking about Celtic, saying how he'd love to have played for them, just circumstances, you know, uh, meant he couldn't play for Celtic. But good Celtic man there, and Gary Hooper bagging a goal down at Old Trafford as well i never seen the game at all. never seen any of uh, it. I never even knew it was on. I think my dad sent me a text message saying it was on, but he sent me a text message with loads of games that were on. I ended up watching something else, and I can't remember what it was. Um, I, but I did see the interview that you've seen. i seen him getting the Celtic jersey at the end of the interview. Celtic mm-hmm. interviewer handed him a Celtic jersey with his name on it. He was delighted with that, wasn't he? Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, John. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's a Celtic man. I remember him scoring the winner against Rangers at Ibrox as well. And he loved every second of that, didn't he? I don't know if you remember that one. I think it was a penalty in the Champions League, uh, beating Rangers at Ibrox. Yeah, yeah. well well done to Wayne Rooney, by the way. Well done. Um, he looks totally different, doesn't he? <laughs> ah, he's, he's put on some weight. I think he was always a bit heavier, Wayne Rooney, but... Uh... Aye, aye, he talks fondly of Celtic and he was delighted to get his jersey at the end of the interview. So... Uh... Ah, it was good to see, yeah. Uh, all the best to win, Rene. I like him. Ah, he's, a, he's a nice guy, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, uh, good lad. Good lad, uh, Wayne Rooney. Um, and from Wayne Rooney to Scott Bruni, let's get let's on to Bruni Watch, John. The Bruni Watch for this week. Uh, Bruni played uh, Air United against Wraith Rovers, didn't he, at home. So it was Air United's home. And there was a brilliant result for him in the Challenge Cup. 3-2, the beat Ray Rovers on this. Bruni, he's absolutely flying, isn't he? Kind of put a foot wrong. Top of the league, in the next round of the Cup. Long may that continue. I, I, look, every Celtic fan wishes Scott all the best in what he does, but I, you're right, he's absolutely flying. He's no lost a game this season. That can only bode well for him. But I've got a wee feeling he's going to bring them up to the Premier League. No, this season. Uh, next season, Xander, just got a wee... Sneaking suspicion, he's got that team flying, and they're certainly playing for him. 
you know, the players are playing their heart out for Scott Brown. So I have to hope and pray that he managed to, to get Air United returning to the Premier League. Of course, that would bring another derby match as well. Air United against Kamarnock. Of course it would. Yeah. But looking um, looking at Bruni, John, right? And this is nonsense I'm going to talk here, right? But let's have a look at the next manager that's... His jacket's on a sugar nail, shall we say, in the Premier League. So that would be Hearts, wouldn't it? Naismith. What if Hearts sack Naismith? Do you think Hearts would go for Brown as a manager? Uh, I don't think Scott Brown would go there. I don't think so either. Just knowing Bruni, I don't think he'd be anywhere near that job. He's a Celtic man, he's a Hibs man. There's no chance on earth he would go there, Alexander. I don't think he would take that job on. I just can't see it. But I look forward to Naismith getting sacked. I hate saying that about any manager, but we know what he's all about. Bursa got against Celtic every time, and then he plays against Rangers, and he has his team lying back. He gives them duff tactics. And, uh, aye, that's why we want Naismith uh, sacked. But Scott Brown, me personally, I don't think he would go anywhere near the Hearts job, Xander. I don't think you go anywhere near it either, John. Just it's a total hypothetical uh, situation. But um, stranger things have happened that they. But no, I don't think you go anywhere near it. There's no like Hearts, loves Hibs, loves Celtic. What if Ross County come calling? Then John Bottom of the league, the league, Ross County sack their manager and come calling, looking for Bruni. Do you think you would maybe think maybe every minute or two about that? Uh, look, he's just took the job on at Air United. I think he's going to see that job through to the end of the season. I think Scott thinks he's got a team there capable of winning that. And if Air United come up to the Premier League, it's a big, big achievement for a manager like Scott Brown. He's a new manager, young manager. He, only, he managed at Fleetwood for a season or whatever. Uh, now he's back in Scotland and I think he's got the team playing for him. I don't think he's gone anywhere, Zander. I think he'll see that job through. And I think he'll do well in that league. He'll finish top or second, getting at the playoffs. Uh and get back into the Premier League. I can see it happening. I, I can only hope it happens because I'd just love to see uh, ex-Celtic players doing well, especially Scott Brown, legend, you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, good luck to Bruno. Keep it up, son. Uh, as I said last week, you're a bit Celtic soon enough with, you know, results like that and performances, you know, flying at the top of the Championship. Absolutely flying, John, and into the next round of the Cup as well. So, yeah. Quickly moving on then again, John. I can't believe how quickly we've gone through this, but it is only a half an hour podcast. East Kilbride against Celtic, that's the reserves and the loan in the league. That was postponed, John. I think the only reason why that was maybe postponed is maybe three or four of the, the younger Celtic boys are being international duty, possibly. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about that, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, OK. Let's move on then, John. The women's, let's touch on the women's uh, football. Celtic, obviously, uh, Champions League, Celtic 3. KUPS one that was in the, the sort of mini group for the qualifier, and then Gintra now Celtic two. So Celtic top to qualifying group. They have to play another qualifying group, I think, to actually qualify officially for the Champions League. But uh, the ladies done well there, John. Two wins out of two. Aye, I don't think they're actually playing any half decent teams there, right enough. But look, any kind of win in the Champions League and qualification or whatever is a good one. But I, well, I'm not putting the ladies down. They did a great job in doing it. Uh, just let's hope they can take it further. That's all I can say. So well done, them. Well done, the ladies. Yeah, absolutely, John. To fly, yeah. Two wins out of two. So, yeah. Uh, let's, let's touch on the Rangers, ladies, then, just very quickly as well. Arsenal six, Rangers now. You want Rangers... to rephrase that? <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal Football Club six, Rangers now. <laughs> Uh, Rangers now, Atletico Madrid three years so the Rangers are out, John, so they, the ladies never went too far for the Rangers. Uh, but good luck to the Celtic ladies in the next round of the qualifiers, John, because I think if they get into the Champions League, there's extra money, strength in the team, etc, etc. Uh, we can only wish the ladies well for Celtic. Well, exactly, I I did enjoy watching the Celtic ladies game every now and again. If I remember it's on, I'll watch it. But generally speaking, I don't look out for it, you know. Unless they're playing Rangers, I'll, uh, I'll definitely watch it. Um, Hibs, I like them beating Hibs as well, of course. Hearts, always gives them a good game. Glasgow City. So I like the kind of games, but your average game, like, you know, playing against Montrose, beating 
9-0 uh, and all that. I don't watch that kind of stuff. It's just a formality, really, that they're going to win. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, John, you broke up a wee bit there. Yeah, but I got the gist of what you were saying. Um, yeah, OK. Let's move away from the ladies' game then, John. Uh, new wee segment, weekly segment here. Uh, biggest result of the week. Here it goes, John. Had a wee look at some of the big results. Right? Also, we just spoke about Arsenal ladies, six Rangers, nothing there. We had uh, Japan beating China 7 nothing. We had Italy under-21s beating San Marino 7 0. We had uh, FC 20 against Cardiff and the ladies 7 0. Uh, we also had uh, a couple of nines. Sweden beating Gibraltar 9 nothing. We had ladies Paris, Saint Germain 9, uh, Vienna 0. But the biggest result of the week, John, the biggest scoreline of the week goes to Valour. Valour ladies 10, Luba 10. Zero, John. So another ten nothing, same as last week. So well done to Valour ladies. Was that on FIFA? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You look at it, John. Some of these, you know, nine nothings, eight nothings. You know, it's. Uh, see, we look at this on a weekly basis. Biggest result of the week, right? And it's only professional teams we're picking here, John. Whether it's ladies, whether it's the men's, it's only the professional level we're looking at. So that was a ten nothing win. For Valour against Liverpool women, so uh, that was in the Champions League qualifier, John ten nothing. So I take it Liverpool will be out of that one. Aye, I got. I don't, I don't watch any of that stuff, but the, the the big result, the big scalping that sticks out, obviously, is Arsenal six Rangers ladies nil, because uh, that Rangers ladies team they're just you talk about Clyde built there, they're they're, uh, they're built with men that team, but. Uh, that Arsenal team must be something else if they beat uh, six nothing. <laughs> All right, swiftly moving on, John. We'll park that there. Uh, <laughs> rivals corner. Okay, we didn't do it last week because the whole thing was rivals corner playing Rangers, went it? But rivals corner, then, John. Let's touch on that. Uh, Tavernier. You know, he's 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 actually been linked away, but we'll get to that in a minute. But Tavernier's saying yet again, John. This guy kind of keep his mouth shut. You'll see a different Rangers at Ibrox when we play Celtic. Yet again, he said it again, John. He said that the last three or four years, how can this guy not keep his trap shut? I don't know. Uh, he said that after they get beaten in the Champions League as well. You'll see a different Rangers against Celtic on Sunday and they get scalped. <laughs> so I, I just keep your big move shut, Tavernu. You haven't got a clue. Uh, listen to your fans' reaction. The fans revolt against you. See what they think about you but you're still coming out with statements like that. You're not going to see a different Rangers. You're going to see exactly the same because they've got inferior players, inferior stadium, inferior manager. Just uh, just stinks of inferiority, the whole thing. They're just a bad, bad business. And yeah. I can't and say that. It's just, just laughable, isn't it? Celtic fans just kind of get enough laughing at him. That's it, John. I mean, it must be because he's on his way out, because there's rumours that he's leaving them, and uh, that's bad news for us, because I want him to stay as long as possible. He's an absolute dud, you know. You know, a Hall of Famer. You've got to remember, John, Hall of Famer, Tavernier. Um, Ferner, Bache, Galatasaray and Besiktas, obviously their transfer windows still open in various places in Europe. So they're, they're looking at him, John, but if I was them, I'd be walking away, but hopefully... Um, Hopefully they do walk away because you want him to stay. If that's their captain, John. They want him to stay as long as possible. The serial loser. Aye, aye, they don't dare walk away. Remember. <laughs> aye, aye. Well, Besiktas, you know, um, I think they were already linked with Tavernier, so they're back in for him. So it looks as though he can still be on his way out, John, even though the transfer window's closed. Right, that's enough for him. Serial loser. Let's move on to the rest. Uh, the rivals' corner. This boy, left winger, Cerny. Or Cherney, whatever they call this boy Cherney, John. He's the only one that's came out and officially said the Celtic outclassed Rangers, right? The manager can't even see it. But this boy Cherney said that Celtic have outclassed us on every department. So well done to that boy for actually having the bravery to say it because, you know, they're in revolt over there, as you say, John, but this boy's came out and said that. No, uh, no messing about. Black and white, Celtic outclassed us in every department. The boy speaks the truth. Yeah. And John, he's also fell out with the, the manager's fell out with, fell out with Cherny, Cherny, whatever his boy's name is, because of the statement that he made, John. So the manager's not happy with him saying that. 
Um, Clement, you know, we had more shots and goals, you know, all that kind of nonsense he's hitting out with after a demolition derby like that. And all this boy Cerny is doing, John, is telling the truth. Aye, well, Celtic did outclass them. It was just, it was a whitewash minute. It just start to finish. But the Rangers had a, a, a 10 minute moral uh, possession. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. 10 minutes, uh, you know, a wee bit of pressure for 10 minutes. Celtic just sucked it up and then countered them and battered them all the other party after that. So, I look, Germany's talking the complete truth. But we know Tavernier and the manager, they're just going to talk complete nonsense, try to. Uh, Look for excuses about how they get beat, and Charlie talks the truth. They get beat because they're outclassed. Plain and simple. End of story. Yeah, that's it, John. I just thought I'd bring it up. Um, so well done to him for that. You know, a bit of honesty for once. You know, coming out of that side of Glasgow. All right, John. Soon as game soon as says that Butland would walk into the Celtic goalkeeper number one position. <laughs> I kill myself laughing when I read that. Have you, we, it was only last week when it we said that Butland uh, is no any great keeper whatsoever. I actually, I actually said last weekend in the post match that he was a dreadful goalkeeper, John. So as soon as this came out saying that he would walk into the Celtic I love first 11, what do you think of that? Well, uh, I don't know what to think of that at all. Look, he's a half decent keeper, Butland, he's no, he's no world class keeper, let's put it that way. I said that to you last week. He's, he ain't a world class keeper. He's far from a world class keeper. But uh, if Graham soon as thinks that, it's up to him. That's his opinion, isn't it? But my opinion is he wouldn't get anywhere near the Celtic bench, let alone the first team. Yeah, that's it, John. I just don't. I said to last week, I just don't rate him. A lot, a lot of people do. I don't even think he's decent. He sold the, sold the jerseys in the Scottish Cup final. He, scored, he sold the jerseys in various Glasgow derbies. Don't rate him. Anyway, um, I totally disagree with Sunnis. He wouldn't get anywhere near the Celtic team as far as I'm concerned. And I know you're the same, John. But um, decent isn't good enough for Celtic. You know, we've got a, a very, very good number uh, two goalkeeper, John, haven't we? Um, that's uh, Sinisalo. Well, what I saw in the close season, John, that boy looks decent as well. And I think he looks better than Butland. I can't remember him during the close season, but I do remember him playing, but I can't remember anything... You know, I mean, any particular saves or anything like that. But I remember thinking he looks half decent, looks a decent keeper, ideal for Celtic if he wants to be, uh, spend the next year or so warming the bench, which I think he will do because I don't think he's going to push Casper Michael at the team. Uh, but I think he should get starts in some of the cup games. I think we're looking at that for some of these signing Celtic made, especially guys like uh, what's his name? I can't remember. Valley is it? His name is the. I think he's one that should come on during the cup games and Sinisalo as well. I think he should be one that should start in the cup games. Yeah, trusty. Is that one in it? Trusty. Trusty, aye, aye. Trusty should maybe come on in the cup games as well. But uh, the other two, I like the look of uh, Luke McGowan. I know that player, obviously, through playing in Scotland. He's a crack wee player. I've always liked him. And, uh, of course, the big signing that we made, £11 million pound boy, just wonder when he's going to break into the team because well, pa- what's his name? Paolo Bernardo never did himself any uh, harm at all, did he? In the derby game, I thought he was absolutely out of this world in that game. It's a shame we get two calf after an hour because uh, we didn't miss matter early when you seen Paolo Bernardo performing like that, I thought. Paolo Bernardo, if he was played the full game, he could have got by in the match. Apart from that, we slip up at the start of the second half. and Maybe that's why they took him off, actually. He tripped over the ball and the Rangers player ran an own goal, didn't he? So, uh, no, John Sinisalo put off a couple of top class saves against uh, Manchester City. And uh, well, I know it was on a close season friendly, but he still would have had to make these saves and he'd done it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with Sinisalo. Um, all right, John, uh, let's have a wee look. Uh, let's have a wee look. I'm going to bring up a new, fe- a new feature, John. Goal of the month. I'm going to bring up goal of the month starting this month so what we'll do is we'll pick the top five goals Celtic goals that is the top five goals and we'll put the the five that we pick into a, like a poll a YouTube poll and the viewers and the listeners can pick the, the goal of the month you like the sound of that Joe? Ah, go for it yeah yeah okay yeah that's so we're going to do that at the end of the month folks 
So just look out for that. Um, probably the last weekend of the month we'll do that. But hey, John, that wraps up Rivals Corner, John. That, that was quite quite funny and interesting, you know. Um, as soon as <laughs> Butland, unbelievable. Um, all right, John, let's touch on the Scotland stuff then before we go, right? Um, currently, it's Portugal 2, Scotland 1. Um, just uh, watching the game just now, Portugal 2, Scotland 1. Um, so uh, let's move on. I think, like I say, a couple of months ago, I think it's time for a change in management in Scotland. Mm, could be, John. It's, uh, things are getting a wee bit stale, but like, you know, so, um, you've got top players like Carl McGregor retiring as well. As regards to the, the polling game, yeah, I think the goalkeeper made a bit of a blunder there, didn't he? The goalkeeper, uh, Angus Gunn, is it? Um, and we're playing players like M- McLean, Ken and McLean, John. When you look at that, you know, you automatically think, nah, it's not going to happen. Aye, well, every time I see Ken and McLean, I just think that's it, it's not going to happen. Um, there is a couple of others. Billy Gilmore, don't rate him, don't think he's in the great shakes either. Half decent wee player, maybe. Aye, uh, uh, he's half decent, but international level. Well, Scotland's no got a lot of players to pick from. That's what you've got to look at as well. There isn't a great amount of fantastic Scottish players. I was watching Ireland against uh, England yesterday till England scored their second goal and I switched it off. Mm. But that Ireland team's crammed with a lot of talented players. And I noticed Liam Scales didn't they get a start either, by the way. Well, did he not, right? Um, yeah, so I think Big Eda got the, the, the nod though, didn't he? I think he started the game and I think he had a couple of chances as well. Aye, Adam Eda had a... He started the game, but I did have a couple of chances. But he was... Uh, Adam Eda's no played for a while, remember? He's just been kind of warming up. He never had any pre-season, really. Um, but aye, England were just on a different level altogether. But there is a lot of the Irish players, I think, are really good players. Of course, you had players that should have been playing for Ireland, like uh, Jack Grealish. Is it Jack Grealish, his name is? Um, yeah, Grealish, yeah. Uh, Bobby Grealish, I don't know what his name is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the other one was Declan Rice, wasn't it? Declan Rice scored a goal, aye. Uh, the two guys that should have been playing for Ireland scored the goals for England. So I look at that and I think, aye, that's... Uh, you know, it like, could have been for Ireland. But uh, like the Irish team, they have got a lot of... I think they've got better players in Scotland, put it that way, Zander. And uh, it's just a pity that guys turned their back on them, like Grealish and Rice, two cracking players. Yeah, that's it, John. That's, it. that's what could have been, isn't it? Uh, so anyway, the international thing, it's nearly over. So we're going to be doing a, a preview of the Hearts game, probably Friday night, John. So that's, that's, that's our next podcast. You know, as long as our uh, players that are playing for Scotland and all the rest of the international team come back uninjured, John, I know that uh, Alistair, he's, he's picked up a wee injury, but we're hoping that the rest come back unscathed. Unscathed, that's what we're hoping for with every player that goes away in international duty. But aye, we've got that one concern right now, Alistair Johnson, just uh, it's never good news hearing about our top players picking up even a wee niggle. Because we niggles can turn that out to be a disaster in the long run. You just don't know. Hope and pray that they all come back injury free, under and ready to play for the Celtic. That, that's it. That's all we're all looking for as Celtic supporters, John. That's it. Bang on. By the way, as regards to the goal of the month, I think Callum McGregor, Callum McGregor sorry, is up for three of them already, isn't he? Hi, definitely. I can read a quick couple of comments if you want, Zander, before you go, because it's been up yeah. already for a while. Yeah, John, go for it. Yeah, yeah, fire in. Uh, what, what are the viewers saying? Aye, Cal McGregor's goal. I think that'll be goal of the month for me. You can't beat that. Check it out on the, the commentary on the video I sent you on WhatsApp, Xander, the Alan Partridge thing. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, Rosemary. Aye, check it out, Xander. It's a good video. Uh, Rosemary was up first. Are we running Europe to top it all off? Your jokes are rank rotten, Xander. She says, uh, I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to tell any male jokes because of that. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I've just not got one handy here now. So, uh, no, no, I'll be running Europe would be amazing, John Winter. Uh, obviously, obviously, we've got a very tough group, you know, Richard Dortmund, Aston Villa, et cetera, et cetera. But I think you said last week, John, uh, home wins, get the home wins in the bag and uh, and you'll be happy. I'll be happy with that as well, to be honest with you. Four home wins, I'm happy. Seeing Celtic winning in the Champions League at Celtic Park, that's what makes it for me, Sandra. 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the comment, Rosemary. Cheers, pal. Thanks, Rosemary. Next up was Roseanne. A couple of roses. Um, Roseanne says, what a fabulous game. She says she was expecting at least five, but three will do fine. Don't get greedy. She says, I agree with Xander. Uh, that lot are in a mess. I've thought that for a while. Love that nice bit of new music, John. Uh, very Beatles. Like, well, it's the Ruttles. It's a Ruttles tune, uh, Rosemary. If you, if you watch the Ruttles, uh, it's kind of Eric Idle and all that. It's parody of the Beatles. And that's where I got the tune from. So I, I recorded it. But aye, thanks, Roseanne. And she says, uh, thanks to all our Brave Tigers for a wonderful game. It was an outstanding day, Roseanne. Me and Xander both still delighted with it. And I'm still watching the highlights today and all the new videos that go up laughing at the Rangers 2012. <laughs> that's it, John. The Rangers. Um, no, no, it's the song. Uh, it's looking good, John. We're hoping we're going to be using that plenty through the season. I, I, I certainly hope so. Anybody that's not seen the Ruttles, by the way, it's a must-watch movie. If you like your music parodies, that was the the Monty Python mob. That was their take on the Beatles. Even though there wasn't, a, it was only Eric Idle and I think Michael Palin made an appearance in it, if I remember right. <laughs> Legends, absolute legends. Uh, ah, it's bright, bright movie, hilarious, absolutely hilarious. I've sought myself. Uh, and the V tune, John, is quite bang on, actually. I enjoy it. And um, so, yeah, we'll hopefully, hopefully, we'll get to use that plenty as the season goes on. As regards to it, it should have been five. No, it should have been five. She's right. It could have easily have been five, John, but they've just got to be happy and accept the three and move on to the hearts game. Aye, that's all we can do. Aye. And anybody want to check out the Ruttles, check out some of their Beatles titles instead. All you need is love. It's all you need is cash. <laughs> yeah. Well, that kind of stuff. Wasn't it? The, the, instead of the Fab Four, it was the Prefab Four. Um, yeah. Instead of uh, John, Paul, George and Ringo, it was Duck, Nasty, Stig and Barry. <laughs> Aye, stop. Top class, and uh, I think it's on YouTube, John. That film, isn't it? It's on YouTube, aye. So, anybody want to watch the Ruttles, you'll hear that wee tune. It's looking good. That's where I got it from. Um, Dirt Nasty, Stig, and Barry, the prefab four. Yeah. Um, uh, what was it? Get up, go. What was that called again? Get up, go back. Get, get like, back to where you once belong. Get up, go. Aye, uh, that's what it is. I get back was the Beatles song, wasn't it? And uh, yeah. the Ruttles changed it to Get Up and Go. <laughs> Uh, it's very, very funny, and it's a good film as well, actually. The music in it's quite good, actually. So, I uh, give it a watch box if you like the Beatles, uh, watch, watch the Ruttles on YouTube. Yellow Submarine Sandwich Sander. <laughs> uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's class. It's funny. Uh, it's Monty, Monty Python. Part, partly it's Monty Python, isn't it? So, what you expect? It's a classic, one of my favourite movies in the early 80s, I think it was. But anyway, moving on, thanks for that, Roseanne. And uh, it's always good to hear from you, one of our good regulars. And speaking of regulars, here's James Doran. Jamesy Boy says, Dominant display yesterday and the result was never in doubt. And 3-0 wasn't a true reflection of the game and could have been a lot more and Casper was hardly tested and made two outstanding saves near the end. Aye, that could have been a lot more than three, uh, James Means Xander says that. That could have been anything Celtic wanted it to be. That's it, John. We both, we both said that in the, the post-match, didn't we? But as regards to Casper, John, that's actually a good point for James again. I know, he, I know he brings up a lot of good points. But Casper only had to make a save when the game was finished. You know, you got to look at it that way. There was two decent saves at the very end. But we're three nothing up at that point. You know, it's the, the points are in the bag. Maybe the players are looking for the full-time whistle. I don't know. But, John, these saves are only made... 88 minutes on the clock, 90 minutes on the clock, so the game's finished. Game was well done. They'd made up, Celtic made a lot of subs and all that stuff, kind of slowed the game down, took the pace out of the game. Uh, I think Rangers kind of maybe thought they'd come back into it with the pace of the game dropping. Had a couple of shots. Casper, world class, now that's what you call a world class keeper's under. Yeah, exactly, John. And he's uh, he's going to do a job and a half for us this season. Sorry, John, I was having a wee drink here myself. Uh, he's going to do a job and a half for us this season. I uh, can't wait to see him in the Champions League. Aye, right. Swiftly moving on here, Xander, because I've got something in the oven. I want to read a quick couple of comments out. Yep. Thanks for that, James. Yeah, thanks, James. Thanks, pal. Keep them coming, buddy. Uh, we would never sell a club, says Outrageous from Pat Santa. 
to criticise Rodgers, who is a top-class manager, and Liam Scales, who has been outstanding since he arrived at Celtic. Well, he never, uh, he never had a go at Liam Scales. We would never sell a club. He had a go at Carl McGregor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, what, what I'll do, right, is I don't want to give this guy too much airtime because it's a nonsense, right? But what I will do is, if you're listening, Pat, come back onto the comments. Tell us what you meant by Carl McGregor. Tell us what you what you think of him now after him banging three world-class goals against uh, SPL teams and Rangers joint. So, I don't know Rangers are on SPL team, but you know what I mean. Three out-class, three uh, outstanding, sorry, world-class goals outside the box. Tell us what you think now, Pat, um, and if you still feel the same way. Oh, of course, he still feels the same way. I was watching uh, the Radio Clive thing on YouTube and he was in the comments, leaving the same comments again, Sander, even after his uh, manager had... Uh, you know, delivered a 3 0 scalping to his fiercest rivals. So uh, the guy's just an idiot, to be honest. But any Celtic fan that thinks Callum McGregor's done's an idiot. Best player at Celtic, apart from. Uh, he's the best player at Celtic in a sense that he controls games. Technically, I think. Uh, what's his name? No, my either. Hatati is the best technical player at Celtic. Yeah. But Callum is the best player at Celtic. He controls every single game he plays in. And to say he's finished. You're an absolute mug for saying that, Pat. Sorry about your mate. Um, uh, John, John, sorry to interrupt. He's, he's a serial legend winner, right? A serial winner legend. Um, a serial winner legend, John. But, Pat, right, I don't, I don't know age you Pat, right? But you look back to the 90s, right, when Celtic were struggling, winning nothing. A dreadful time for Celtic. You know, you, you, you think back to then and then think to now. And thank you, thank your lucky stars, thank your lucky stars, Pat. Pat. Moving on, John. Pat the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat the pilot, right enough, John. Um, we'll say no more. Moving on. I couldn't care less if he comes back or no. We we uh, an outlook like that. I think the guy needs to get yourself a, a reality check. Sorry, Pat, you just really need to get yourself a reality check. Like Xander says, uh, you want to think we're bad, go back to the 90s when uh, we were on our knees, had nothing. There was 5,000 fans at the games at the old Celtic Park and all that. Go back to the days if you're of that vintage and tell me that Celtic manager's bad and Callum McGregor's bad. See, both serial winners, and I'm proud and glad to have both of them at Celtic. Well said, John. Well summed up. Well said, buddy. Aye, well, I remember, certainly remember it, uh, and you certainly remember it. Um, and I'm sure Pat does as well, but never mind. Moving on, Chris D says, McCausland kicked out at Dyson after he won the ball back for Cal Matt's goal. Aye, i seen that, Chris. I definitely, do you remember that, Xander? Dyson won the ball. Uh, he passed it, and after the ball was away, McCausland booted Dyson and put him on the ground. Do you remember that? No, I vaguely remember that, John. I think it was, uh, was that near the end of the game, wasn't it? I think it was. Aye, 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 vaguely remember that, John. Yeah, I mean, there's so many tackles and things like that after the ball incidents that went unpunished, John. So it's just something that as Celtic fans and the players, the Celtic players, need to get used to. I think you said that in the post-match. Aye, well, was that the Callum McGregor goal? That was that the Callum McGregor goal? Remember, the ball was fizzed in, I think it came off my either, and luckily it came back to McGregor, kind of ping-pong. And once it came off my either, McCausland just booted my either up in there. No ball. There was no ball there. Mm-hmm. McGregor was already away to strike it into the top corner. Um, so I, uh, McCausland, he's just a young boy. I'm not going to have a go at the young boy, but aye, that was worth a, a VAR check because uh, booting a player like that off the ball can be deemed assault because yeah. it's, it's nothing to do with the game, basically. And then the boys booted out. Young boy, lack of experience, that was bad. Yeah, he's he's lucky, John, as well, because I don't think the VAR was working last weekend, if I'm being honest with you, because the things that you know, the, the Wisner looked at, you know, the, the one I remember was the, you know, the raising of the hand, you know, after the ball was gone on the on the byline, Celtic fans going off their head, uh, Celtic player gets his face struck by a raised hand by a Rangers player. I can't remember who it was, John, because it was a week ago, and it wasn't even looked at before, you know, uh, a Stonewall red card. Another one, John. So that's two. That's two in the same game. Aye. Well, I'll read the rest of Chris's comment because he mentions a few of these things. He says, uh, Diamonde raising his hands 
Jumping on Alistair Johnson, nothing done. He says Bar- Baron coming through the back of Hatati, nothing done. Yeah, I remember that one. I went on about that last week. Yeah, uh, he says our goal was wrongly chopped off. Yeah, uh, no penalty for a shooter handball. Yeah, and a referee actively taking away our advantages, and we yeah. still pumped them. Yeah, John, that's true. Uh, so who, who, who said that comment, John? Who was that? That was Chris D, one of your kind of semi regulars. Right, Chris D, well said. Well said, Chris, because uh, I mean, the diamond one, that's one I was talking about. The hand is raised and he throws his arm back into this. I think it was Alistair Johnson, was it? And his face, John, it doesn't even get looked at. Uh, three times we, we, we gained an advantage and it was pulled back. So that was three times we could have scored from an advantage if it was given, wasn't given. Uh, and every, or every other decision Johnny mentioned there is uh, you forget about all these wee decisions because we won the game 3 nothing, John, but we shouldn't be forgetting about it because you imagine for that game is it nothing each or, or even worse if we're getting beat one nothing, which uh, was highly unlikely, obviously. But you imagine if that was the case, John, and these decisions are not going in Celtic's favour. I know, exactly. I totally agree with you and Chris. It is, it's really, really, really poor officiating. What I can say is we need to try and imagine these games without Rangers supporting officials. Because if that was the case, that game would have been about 10 nothing. Because Celtic wiped the floor with them. One of the most one-sided derby matches I've ever seen in my life. And I think that could have been 3 going on 10, 12, whatever Celtic wanted it to be. But the refereeing and the VAR was so poor. It was unbelievable. So biased. Stoke my tax. You know, uh, instead of just waving play on, it would have been a goal probably. He pulls it back. Three times he'd done that. He never offered the handball against Suter. Uh, and Chris went on to finish his comment by saying, football in karma at its finest. Aye, John. And do I know something? Uh, maybe I'm um, being a wee bit premature here, but I'm looking forward to going to Ibrox and wiping the flower with them again. I can't wait. Honestly, that was so one-sided, John. I know they might be a different team by then, John, but they might be worse. You don't know. You don't know what kind of Rangers are going to turn up at Ibrox. It's a long, long time till we go to Ibrox. When is it? January, I think it is, we go to Ibrox. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it, John, uh, because they, like, like, I know we've already done Rivals Corner, but a wee touch, Sean, I know you want to go and get your, your dinner, John, but Rangers have weakened severely since last season and we won the league eight points. Aye, that's it. They definitely have weakened. Um, but I've gone to Ibrox. I don't think that'll be any big deal for Celtic. I don't, I don't think Celtic will struggle at Ibrox at all. They know how to win there. They definitely know how to win there without fans. It's, it's not a big deal. But uh, I, I noticed their stadium's uh, getting opened for the Falkirk game. They're only going to use three of the stands and leave the scrapyard shut. Right, so why did they not do that to start with? That was my, that was my argument, and your argument, John, at the very start of all this. Have you got rid of the asbestos in one stand, maybe? <laughs> I don't know, but IB says that a long time ago. Why not just play with the three stands? Uh, I I agree with you. I should have just played with the three stands all along, but I don't think they're going to uh, play the Premier League games. Uh, it's just a game against uh, who is it they're playing at Ibrox? I can't remember, but they're going to open Falkirk. it for that game. Falkirk in the cup. Aye, Falkirk. Aye, that's. Uh, I'm going to open three stands for that. Uh, well, uh, the scrapyard's getting sorted. <laughs> Uh, yeah, keep your metal locked up, folks. If you've got any line about it, keep it put it in the house, keep it safe. Um, <laughs> right, John, uh, is that it for the comments? Have we packed it in there? Ah, uh, well, just one there. Roseanne says it sounds as if Pat's going on a false name. I think he's a Billy. Uh, I, I don't think he's a Billy, I just think he's a. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what he is. He's expecting too much, I think. If I was to sum him up, he's just uh, a guy with high expectancy levels. And like I keep saying, and you keep saying, go back to the nineties and talk about expectancy levels. If you were swapped right now with the nineties, going back to the nineties, you would take right now Celtic. You know what I mean, Xander? It's just Celtic are just class right now, class manager, class team, and Scotland anyway. But to me, that's all that matters. Yeah. Well, I'll sum it up, right, John? Before we go, is Pat, if you're listening, be grateful for what you've got. Don't be spoiled. Be grateful for how dominant Celtic are, Celtic winning trophy after trophy. You've got to be 
very grateful for every minute and appreciate every single minute of this because it's not going to last forever. I don't know about their guns, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> if I have a dinner, then I'm next time you go to remember that. <laughs> Aye, well, there's Aberdeen, of course, but uh, look, look, we're only joking, of course. Chances are Rangers in the future could turn it around. And like you says, nothing lasts forever like that. Um, so I'm basically lapping every single League One right now that we get. League Ones, Cup Ones. Because it doesn't last forever. It comes to an end at some point. So uh, if Celtic are dominant for the next... Uh, two, three years, five, ten years, whatever. Lap up every single one of these ones because there'll come a time when our joy will come to an end. So, ah, you have got to lap it up, Sander. And I'm just, uh, the last 12 years or whatever, last 13, 14 years, I've just been lapping every moment of it up. Every single one against them. I celebrate it for two weeks. Every league one, I go back and watch it and watch it and watch it all through the season. So I am lapping it up, and every single Celtic fan, everybody that wears the green and white hoops, should be doing exactly the same thing. Celebrate every moment as if it was the last. Yeah, that's it, John. Well put. And I think the people that support Celtic of our vintage, they do do that, John, to be honest with you. It's maybe the younger ones that maybe take it a wee bit for granted, but possibly not. Um, I, I, I hope no. I hope nobody takes it for granted because it's, uh, it's, just, it's lovely and enjoy it as much as you can. Appreciate every single moment. That's what I'll say. These trophy lifts, doubles, trebles, superb. Just love every moment, moment of it in the Champions League as well. John. And you've got to remember, John, I know I keep saying I'm going to pack it in, but just remember when we weren't even in the Champions League, John. Every year it was Rangers in the Champions League. You've got to bear that in mind as well. Every year we watched Rangers in the Champions League. Don't get me wrong, it was good because it got gobbed every game, but every year it was them, John, and we were in the UEFA Cup, etc., John. So, Enjoy us being in the Champions League as well. Aye. The, most, the thing I enjoy most about the Champions League is the money that we get because it puts us ahead of them financially. Mm -hmm. And they've got to try and cope with that by spending money they haven't got. And it puts them in a worse position. And at the end of the day, what I want to see is them gone bust again, but staying away for good. Yeah, that's it, John. Yeah, that's, uh, that's your opinion. That's up to you. Not a problem. You know, if they die, they die. It makes it's nice getting off my nose either, John. But a lot there is a lot of people that want to see them in the league. And that is good watching them when we when we beat them in you've got to be honest with that as well. Uh, beating them time after time. Especially at Ibrox, John, it's brilliant beating them at Ibrox. I just totally love that. Especially when there's no fans. <laughs> that's, um, that's no a uh, sectarian point of view, by the way. It's just they should have went bust twelve years ago. And miracul yeah. miraculously they've come back to the dead. Uh, keep claiming they've got 55 uh, titles after getting liquidated and administrated uh, bought, over, bought over by Sefco who then changed their name to The Rangers and they still think they're the same club uh, it's just laughable and uh, there's no argument that they no, should have went first yeah. no no John that's it it's, um, but we can only play who's put in front of us they are, they are a new club if you're going to be honest they're a new club Right, and we're beating this new club. And a lot of the, there is some Rangers fans that you know say that. You know, you're beating us time after time, but it's not the original club. So and you've got to make up your mind. Are you the original club? Are you know the original club? Anyway, John, it doesn't matter. Who cares about them, John? As long as we are flying, that's all that matters. Um, right, John, let's wrap it up, John. Um, thanks for coming on tonight, buddy. That was quite good, quite interesting. Enjoyed that. Thanks for the commenters there as well. Thank you for leaving your comment. I'm glad we've got a few in because we missed out the comments in the last... Uh, podcast at me. Uh, let's turn out for your uh, YouTube reel in midweek because the competition is going to be on Wednesday so hit your notification bell for that. Uh, as soon as you hit that notification bell you get a wee notification that the competition is there so hit that. Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button as well. Um, we'll leave it there John, anything you want to add before we go? No, just look forward to next week's games and that's all I'm looking forward to really. Yeah, that's it, John. We're back next Saturday against Hart, so we're looking forward to that. Post-match next Friday. Um, OK, we'll leave it there. John, hail, hail, buddy. Thanks for coming on. Hail, hail, Xander. Speak to you next week. Hail, hail, buddy.